had been coming to Las Vegas every winter for probably like six or seven years. So much climbing. I had some really good friends here and the weather is so stable. I started thinking about maybe buying a house. It was the only place in the States that really felt like it could satisfy everything that I wanted in a, in a home. All the luxuries and amenities of being in a city, but then within a 20 minute drive from my house, you know, you're in total wilderness. The, the perfect combination of kind of things that I feel like I want and need to have a happy life. I still travel for a lot of the year, but realistically, there's so much to keep me busy, even just close to home that I mean, it's nice. I, it's nice to be able to sleep in your bed at night and also have like a myriad of super, super hard projects within your, you know, 20 minute, 30 minute drive in your backyard, literally. I've been climbing up here at Mount Potosi with Andy Rather for many years. Uh, Andy's actually one of the first pro climbers who ever wanted to climb with me at all, which was pretty cool. That was many years ago, I doubt he remembers. But in the Vegas area, Andy's done tons of work and he's uh, in a lot of ways like the king of Potosi. And he has this incredible character about him where he just he just puts in so many hours and, and to him, like, you know, his climbing and the mastery of his climbing is important to him, but I think more than anything, he just loves making a contribution and just working his ass off. And I so much respect that. I just really want to be able to put in the work to like have it be prepped and ready to go so somebody else will come along and do it. And I, of course, have my projects as well. Like this, I've put up a bunch of stuff and freed things and whatnot, but if you want steep uh, resistance limestone or bouldery limestone routes, like. There's tons of crags around here. It's cool to see people that see that there's a lot of good stuff here in Vegas. I've seen him trying this project that he kind of resurrected and extended and moved some bolts on. And uh, I've seen him try it over the last couple of years. And, you know, last fall he, uh, he got in touch with me. You know, in not so many words, he kind of said, there's a few projects that I maybe would be willing to part with now that I've got this whole family thing going on. So. He kept a few things to himself, but one thing that he let go was this thing called Smoke Wagon. And it was generous of him to share that with me. And I, the next objective was to basically climb uh, a much harder beginning to Smoke Wagon. So it's like a mid 514 right into the, to the meat of all the hardness on Smoke Wagon. Adds a lot to the pump and um, it makes the jump, big move, crux of Smoke Wagon much, much harder. And, it just felt like a totally full value, epic, you know, like what you'd expect out of a cave so this crazy.
Andy is such a workhorse and for the few of us in the climbing community here that you know climb on all of his hard routes it's like you know we're all so appreciative and so grateful to him and his dad they're building the trail you know they're they're bolting the routes they're cleaning the routes as far as potency is concerned Andy is definitely the king and uh, we all respect his throne when we're up here that's for damn sure it's been an amazing process <laughs>